All right. Praise God. Jesus bless this message in Jesus name. I pray. Amen. Okay. Test day number three. Here we go. Going across the board this way, all the way across, come back and go this way. I numbered it here. We're going to pick it up on numbers 149 through 65. Then we're going to go on to 66 through 69 and on down the road. So all the way to the right, then come back and go this way, starting right here. Okay. Again, Jesus blessed this message, and we plead the blood of Jesus on it. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget to answer what it is, not what you think it should be or what you wish it was. Answer what it is. And then go back to Monday's. If you're just starting this today, go back to Monday's video. That's the first test. It's called exam number one. Yesterday was exam number two. Today's exam number three. And we're going on until we finish it. Then we're going to take our spiritual gift inventory. And we do this every three to four months to help you examine your life like the Bible says and make sure you're found worthy when Jesus comes. Okay? To stand in front of him with no guilt and shame and all that stuff is to help you. All right? So we're starting right here, picking it up at number 49 in your notebooks. You're going to answer how true are each of these questions I'm about to ask you. False? Somewhat false, not sure, mostly true, or absolutely true. Give yourself a number. Number 49, I am open and responsive to Bible teachers in my church. I am open and responsive to Bible teachers in my church. Right here. It's my box you got to worry about right now. Oh, there we go. Uh, number 50, I readily receive and forgive those who offend me. 51, I see myself as loved and valued by God. 52, I express genuine praise and gratitude to God, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. I'll say that one again, number 52. I express genuine praise and gratitude to God, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. 53. I avoid close relationships with other people who hinder the expression of my Christian values and principles. I ask that again. I avoid close relationships with others who hinder the expression of my Christian values and principles. 54, I am consciously aware that God placed me on earth to contribute to the fulfillment of his plans and his purposes. 55, I recognize that everything I have belongs to God. 56, my life is filled with stress and anxiety. 57. I believe that God will always provide my basic needs in life. Let me say that again. I believe that God will always provide my basic needs in life. 58. I am somewhat hesitant. To let other people know that I'm a Christian. 59. I avoid situations in which I might be tempted by sexual immorality. 60. I am presently struggling with an unforgiving attitude towards another person. <clears throat> 61. I feel very inferior to others in my church. 62. I seek God first in expressing my values and setting my priorities. 63. I am able to remain confident of God's love and provision even during difficult circumstances. Are you able to remain confident 
of God's love and his provision, even when it's difficult? 64. I forgive those who offend me, even if they do not apologize. And 65. Being a Christian is a private matter and does not need to be discussed with other people. Okay, now we're moving on across the board to the right. This box right here. Picking it up at number 66. And if you notice, I put up here, right up here, last year, what percentage of your income did you contribute last year? What percentage of your income did you contribute to these questions I'm going to ask you? Number 66, last year, what percentage of your income did you contribute to your church? Number 67, last year, what percentage of your income did you contribute to other religious groups or religious organizations? And I told you, this is where I was telling you yesterday, if you help us financially... Then you can answer, yes, you're helping the poor. Yes, you're helping the homeless. Missionary work, evangelistic work, um, things like that, because we help Africa. So you can answer, yeah. If you help us here with that, then yes, you answer yes. So let's we'll go to number 68. Last year, what percentage of your income did you contribute to charities or social service organizations? Now, if you help us here, you can answer yes to this next one. Last year, what percentage of your income did you contribute to the foreign missions? To foreign missions, like we do Africa, Namibia. So if you've helped us, just answer how much did you help last year? None? A little bit? Uh, are you doing it the way God said do it? You know, how are you doing it? Answer that. Okay, moving on down here, there's just one question for number 70. I mean, one, yeah, right here. None, a few, several, the majority are all. And your question is, how many of your closest friends do you consider to be unbelievers? None, a few, several, the majority are all of them. Okay, moving on down the line right here. Sorry about the light. Can you help it? How often, again, during the past year? Just picking it up at number 71. Never, once, two to five times, six to nine times, or ten times or more. How often during the past year? You clearly, number 71, you clearly felt God's presence in your life. How about number 72? How often during the past year you shared with someone how to become a Christian? How about number 73? You in invited an unchurched person to attend our barn, our, our church in the barn. How many times during the past year have you brought somebody to church in the barn? Because that's our church, or in any church, if you have another church, then there you go. Number 74, how many times in the past year did you experience the Holy Spirit's providing? Um, understanding, guidance, conviction of sin, because when you have conviction of sin, that's the Holy Spirit doing that for you, not to you, for you. Now, a lot of people experience conviction up around this ministry because that we speak Bible, and the best what the Bible does convicts people of sin and guides you and gives you understanding of it. So again, number seventy-four. How many? How often during the past year have you experienced the Holy Spirit's providing understanding, guidance, conviction of sin, all that? Number seventy-five. How about? During the past year, uh, met with a new Christian to help them grow spiritually. And if you're in this ministry with us, you got your emails. That's what I'm asking y'all to do in them emails on the website. 
Number 76, how often in the past year have you told other people about God's work in your life? And let me stop right there for a minute. I do have some people that are like, would you tell the group this? Would you tell the group that? Would you tell the group I'm here in the Holy Spirit? Would you tell the No. You have a testimony for you to personally share. That's your job, your duty, to share your testimony yourself. Okay, not to have somebody else do it for you. Number 77. How often in the past year have you helped someone pray to receive Jesus Christ? 78, how about in the past year, how often have you gave a gospel track or a similar literature to an unbeliever? Okay, moving on down back over here. In the corner, number 79 through 91. Picked it up. And number 79, do you agree or disagree? How much? 79, it is very important for every Christian to serve other people. Number 80, one day God will hold me accountable for how I use my time, my money, and my talents. 81, all Christians are to follow Bible teachings. Number 82, the Bible is the authoritative source of wisdom for daily living. 83, a Christian must learn to deny himself to serve Christ effectively. 84, I have a hard time accepting myself. 85, I have identified my primary spiritual gift. 86, following the death of an unbeliever goes to a place called hell. Following death, an unbeliever goes to a place called hell. 87, all of the Bible's moral and ethical teachings are binding for the modern Christian. 88, given time to a specific ministry in the church is necessary for a Christian's spiritual welfare. 89, regardless of my circumstances, I believe God always keeps his promises. 90, without the death of Jesus, salvation would not be possible. And 91, the Bible is a completely reliable revelation from God. Okay, now if you've been studying here and taking this very serious, the time you've been here, what we do on the videos, what we do in the barn, the homework, uh, all the studies, the Everything we've been giving you, you should be able to answer this next one pretty good. You get as much of God as you want, but here we're pumping it out to you daily. So how well trained and prepared are you for this next group of uh, questions? It's number, pick it up at 92 through 97. Not trained at all, somewhat trained, average, adequately trained, or very well trained. And that's uh, all up to you right there. Picking it up at number 92. Um, how well trained are you in presenting the plan of salvation? How about how well trained are you in individually following up or helping a new Christian grow and develop spiritually? 94, how about how well trained are you in leading someone to pray and receive Christ? as Lord and Savior. 95, how about visiting a prospect for your church? 96, how well trained are you 
and sharing the Bible with somebody. <clears throat> 97. How about sharing your personal testimony about how you became a Christian? Okay, now we're going to move it on down to how often during the past two or three years. Picking it up at number 98. Have you read the Bible by yourself? And that doesn't mean step away from the church or step away from what God is teaching you here. That means you add that into your day, your alone time with God. That don't mean walk away from where God has put you. You know, sometimes people will say, well, I just need to be alone. And I'll tell you, you're out of God's will. And that person will get angry. Because you got to understand, you are supposed to spend some alone time with God. But at the same time, you don't walk away from your church and where God is teaching you. Because he also says, don't forsake assembling thyself together. So, I mean, you got you to get God's schedule down in your life. Um, where am I at? Number 99. How often during the past two or three years two or three years have you consciously put into practice the teachings of the Bible? I'll say that again, number 99. How often during the past two or three years have you consciously put into practice the teachings of the Bible? How about 100? Prayed by yourself. How often during the past two or three years did you pray by yourself? 101, provided help to needy people. How about 102? How often in the past two or three years have you read and studied about the Christian faith? And if you're here with us, you get that daily. Yes, you should be doing your part. Number 103, how often in the past two or three years have you participated in Bible studies like we do at the barn Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Not forsaking assembling ourselves together like the Lord said. 104, how about made the necessary changes when you realized as a result of exposure to the Bible that an aspect of your life was not right, so you changed it. So that you can live according to the Bible. How often during the past two or three years have you shared an insight, an idea, a principle, a guideline from the Bible with other people? Now, every one of you should give yourself a five on this next question. I'm going to tell you right now, especially if you're here and you know it. Because me and Igor and Shanoa and Steffi... And now some other people are coming in on it. Natalie, Isaac. I mean, there's different ones. Different ones coming in on it. That's, that's just killing it for you. How often during the past two or three years have you experienced the care, love, and support of other people in a church? How about 107? How often in the past two or three years have you directly tried to encourage someone to believe in Jesus Christ. And 108, how often during the past two or three years have you intentionally spent time building friendships with non-Christians? Okay, moving it on down here. Picking it up at 109. So how true is this for you? 109. How true is it for you? Never true, rarely true, sometimes, often, almost always true. 109. I feel God's presence in my relationships with other people. 110. I treat people of the other gender in a pure and holy manner. 111. When convicted of sin in my life, I readily confess it to God as sin. 112, through prayer, I seek to discern God's will for my life. 113, 
I readily forgive others because of my understanding that God has forgiven me. 114, I help others with their, I can't read mine right, hold on a minute. I, I help others with their faith questions and struggles. 115, I have learned through my faith that the scriptures, I'm sorry, 115, I have learned through my faith and the scriptures how to sacrifice for the good of other people. 116, I share my faults and my weaknesses with others whom I consider to be close to me. 117, I am generally the same person in my private that I am in public. 118, when God makes me aware of his specific will for me in an area of my life, I follow his leading. Remember, God will require you make some big changes. Some people follow, some's like, no way. So I asked 118 again. When God makes me aware of his specific will for me in an area of my life, I follow his leading. 119, I regularly find myself choosing God's way over my way in specific instances. 120, I am, a, I am honest in my dealings with other people. And 121, I regularly pray for my church's ministry. Okay, I'm going to give you a second because we still got a lot to do, but I got to erase some of this board down here. So go ahead and take a minute and pray over your next set of questions. And remember, don't take a lot of time thinking about it. You start taking a lot of time, you start coming up with, I mean, don't do be too quick, but don't think too hard about it because it'll turn into something that's not real if you think too hard about it. The answer's right there in you. It's right there. If you think too hard about it, you'll start thinking of, well, you know, this is what I should be doing. And it'll just turn into something else. So you know the answers to these questions for yourself. All right, we stopped at 121. Give me just a second. Starting at 122, you can copy this down as I call it out. One will equal never. Two is a few times. Three is monthly. Four is weekly. And five is more than once a week. And that's uh, 122 through 125. Okay, then we got to go. How much you disagree? One, def, just give me a second. One, def, disagree. Two, tend to disagree. Three, not sure. Thank you for sticking with me on here, y'all. I'm doing the best I can for you. Uh, four, I tend to agree. And five, I definitely agree. 
I know you could be watching other stuff and doing other stuff, but I appreciate you taking time to do these studies the Lord is given to you. 126 to 135. Okay. Let's go ahead and pick this back up. Now, let's move you back down here. We're over in this box right here. Picking it up at 122. Which is at the bottom. So how often, 122, do you um, attend worship services at your church? Which if you're here, if this is your church, we have worship Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the barn. How often do you attend worship services with your church? 123, how about the Bible classes at, our, at your church? Because we have Bible studies, we have movie nights and stuff like that. 124, how often do you attend Bible studies other than at your local Sunday school? 125, how often do you attend prayer groups or prayer meetings? Okay, now we're going to go right here. Pick it up at 126 to 135. Definitely disagree, tend to disagree, not sure, tend to agree, definitely agree. 126, God fulfills his plan primarily through believers within a church context. 127, Jesus Christ designated churches as his means and environment for nurturing believers in the faith. Remember I explained to you the world is earth is like a big school and God knows which classroom you need to go in, which church he wants you to go into. So it's real important you follow God and not where you put yourself. Go where God puts you. A lot of people run from the Lord. 128, a new believer should experience believer's baptism by immersion prior to acceptance by a church member. I'm sorry, let me, let me ask this. I can't read my own stuff, y'all. Hold on. 128, a new believer should experience believer's baptism by immersion prior to acceptance by a church as a member. 129, Baptism and the Lord's Supper are church ordinances and should not be practiced outside the gathered church. What is the church? Y'all, don't think about a building. The church is the body. So do you think, somebody asked me, could anybody baptize anybody? Well, what do you think? What do you think about that? You think anybody could just baptize anybody? Why do you think God ordains preachers and teachers and evangelists and missionaries and prophets and stuff like that? Why do you think? So let me ask you that one again. Baptism and the Lord's Supper are church ordinances and should not be practiced outside the church. Again, what is the church? The body. 130, each person born into the world inherited a sinful nature as a result of Adam's fall and is thereby separated from God and is in the need of a savior. 131, each church is one with Jesus Christ as the head and should work together to spread the gospel to all people. 132, there is only one true and personal God who reveals himself to humanity as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you 132 again. There is only one true and personal God who reveals himself to humanity as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 133. 
Christ will return a second time to receive his believers, living and dead, unto himself and to bring the world to an appropriate end. 134. Jesus Christ is God's son who died on the cross for the sins of the world and was resurrected from the dead. And 135, Jesus Christ, during his incarnate life on earth, was fully God and fully man. All right, praise God. You don't have to share your answers with us, y'all. That's personal. That's for your growth chart. Examine yourself. Galatians 6, 4, and there's many other verses. Examine yourself, and we do this every three to four months. Keep it in your notebook. Now, I'm going to be uploading a couple more videos today that don't have anything to do with this exam, okay? It's just some stuff God is wanting me to speak with you about. And then tomorrow, we're going to be going into an exam on, uh, well, it's not an exam, but it's uh, spiritual gift inventory. So you can see what your spiritual gifts may very well may be, okay, to help you get an idea what you need to start uh, working on and and doing your part in the body. Everybody got a part in the body of Christ. It doesn't say what they are, but it's a good probability of what they could be. So we'll be doing that Thursday and Friday here. And then our exams will be up. Okay. And God bless you all. Thanks some of you for what you're doing for this ministry, helping us and Africa. Uh, we're trying to get a lot of stuff switched over to the website um, which you know that ching, ching, ching's up. So thank you guys for helping us be a church that God gave me, that he's giving to us to build. Thank you, church, for being the church and helping the church grow. Like God said, thank you for that, y'all. Amen. Anything you need for that's in the description. And thank the, those of you that's also helping with Africa. Yeah, We Are Jesus Doers is doing some wonderful stuff, man. Wonderful stuff for God and for his people. Thank those of you that's here and helping out and everything with that. All right. Be looking for my video later that I'm going to be doing, helping you understand how the Holy Spirit works a little bit better. Okay. This will probably be uploaded and then be looking for that one. But God is really wanting me to get this out to you. What does it mean to be baptized? Are you baptized? Are you baptized in water? The water that you must be baptized in to go to heaven? Do you get the Holy Spirit when you get saved? Can you lose the Holy Spirit? Do you get more and more and more and more and more and more of the Holy Spirit as long as you're on this earth? We're going to answer those questions when I come back. God bless you. Give your life to Jesus. Make him Lord of your life. Um, you're, you're welcome to share these exams. Let's go back on my videos. Exam one, exam two, exam three. Okay. Share them with, if you, if you have another church, share them with your church. I ain't never seen another church in the world that does this for their flock. That really helps them take a look at their life and their walk. But that's what Jesus is doing here with us. Share them. It needs to be out there in these churches. These people need to be getting the fear of the Lord. They need to be examining your life. So that's what you need to be doing. So share them. Yeah, go ahead. All right, God bless you all. In Jesus' name, make Jesus Lord of your life. I'll see you all in bed. Anything you need is in the description or JesusDoers.com. God bless you.